All right, guys, in chapter four, we're going to be looking at uh, tissues, the study of tissues, which is called histology. And you kind of see the, the book definition there for histology, the study of normal structures of tissues, um, which is really a, um, a collection of cells kind of working together, um, structurally and functionally related cells and kind of their environment together. Uh, to perform some specific task working together, C cells working together for a, a related task or function. And you see a couple of main uh, bullet points here about, um, about tissues. They usually consist of discrete population of cells and that they are related. They have similar structure, they have similar function, so they're working together to complete some type of um, you know, common function. And they usually have some kind of surrounding substance around them called an extracellular matrix. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but that extracellular matrix uh, helps to support the cells and helps to provide nutrients for the cells and, and, and different, different functions for the actual um, tissue cells. Now there's four major types of tissues found in the body. And I'll kind of give you a brief introduction of each one of these now, and then we'll go through each one kind of individually and kind of highlight a few things. And then in the lab portion, you'll see uh, specific examples of each of the four types of the tissues. So the first type is listed here, or the first two types are listed here for you on the slide. Uh, the first one is epithelial tissues. Um, just a couple of brief characteristics about epithelial, and we'll get into more specific details, details later, but this is very tightly packed cells. These are cells that, that are very tightly packed. There's not a lot of space around them. Um, usually they're in a sheet type format, um, very little, if any, extracellular matrix. Um, really no visible extracellular matrix makes up this type of tissue. And so usually when you look at these, um, you just see layers of cells. And we'll talk about how these are aligned um, a little bit later and then also in lab. You usually find epithelial tissues in places like body surfaces. And so for example, your skin, uh, your epidermis, this is epithelial tissue. And then also um, your body cavities, um, your um, the lining of uh, membranes is usually epithelial tissue, epithelial cells, and, um, and even your glands. And so we'll talk about some more examples as we go through. The second main type of tissue is what's called a connective tissue. And as the name implies, it connects um, tissues together, it connects uh, cells and tissues together in the body. And uh, this particular type of tissue, there is a lot of this extracellular matrix. And we'll talk about this, um, not just in this chapter, but um, because that your, your bone tissue is a type of connective tissue, it has a lot of extracellular matrix um, that provides the density for your bones. And so when we get to bone physiology, we'll, we'll be talking about this type of extracellular matrix as it um, helps to support your bones but it is a prominent feature for, for the connective tissue types we'll look at. And uh, connective tissues help to bind um, tissues together and support, protect, and um, even um, allow for transportation of substances. And so we'll see some specific examples of connective tissue a little later on. Tissue type number three is muscle tissue. And so, uh, so we've got epithelial tissue, we've got connective tissue, now we have muscle tissue. And uh, muscle tissue has a couple of um, distinguishing factors. One is it has ability to contract. Um, this is different than any of the other types of tissues, but muscle tissue has ability to contract. And when it does that, it generates force. And um, again, there's very little extracellular matrix found here in, um, in muscle tissue. There's really three types of muscle tissue, and we'll talk about these a little later on as well, but those three types would be smooth muscle, uh, skeletal muscle, and cardiac muscle. Then the fourth type of the main tissues in the body is nervous tissue. And so these are specialized types of cells that have the ability to generate um, information, generate messages, or what we'll call action potentials, uh, and sending the, this message or action potentials and also receiving these messages and um, they have surrounding them a particular specific type of extracellular matrix that we'll look at a little later in the chapter. So we kind of been mentioning um, a little bit about extracellular matrix, so let's kind of look at that first, and then we'll kind of go back and look at each of the four types of tissues 
a little closer in. And so what is this extracellular matrix? Well, it's really a combination of three main things. Uh, one, protein, protein fibers. Two, something called ground substance. And then three, some fluid that's associated with it. And depending on what kind of tissue you have, you may have, you know, like the connective tissue has a lot of the extracellular matrix around the cells. And then some, like epithelial, has very, very little. So protein fibers really come in uh, two main types. In this case, uh, collagen fibers and elastic fibers. Collagen fibers, these are protein fibers. They're very strong. Um, although they are flexible, they don't really stretch. So, so they're inelastic. That, that means they do not stretch really, but they do bend and they are flexible. Um, sometimes you see the word reticular and that's a type of collagen a category of collagen that's just very fine and that's what I've got a picture on this slide here of the little dark lines here that represents very fine reticular type collagen fibers and so they kind of form a branching type network many times you see this in um, tissues or organs that that work as a filter so for example the spleen um, has reticular type collagen fibers and that helps to filter you know, out um, microorganisms. Now you also find in um, extracellular matrix elastic type fibers and as the name implies these have the ability to stretch and so they're more um, uh, flexible, um, not quite as strong as collagen but they and they do have the ability to stretch. Second thing in, um, that you'll commonly find in extracellular matrix is what's called ground substance. It's just a general term for a lot of different chemicals or several different chemicals. And so the first one, I've got three examples for you, but the first one up here is something called a glycosaminoglycan. And uh, just um, abbreviated GAG or GAG. Um, and these category, this category of chemicals really help to trap in or hold in some fluids. And so usually that fluid is there for a, a lubrication type purpose. And so a good example is something called hyaluronic acid. You may have actually heard of this. Um, some um, pharmaceutical companies and some um, uh, companies that you know, make lotions and things, they, they, want, they want you to be aware of some of the ingredients. And so they put in their advertisements that they include a lubricant called hyaluronic acid for certain types of lotions and things. But this naturally occurs in the body especially in places like um, your, uh, the fluid that's inside of your knee joints or your synovial type joints in the body because that acts as a lubricant. And so you'll find some of these types of molecules inside of the ground substance. You also find something called a proteoglycan, and this kind of helps to strengthen the extracellular matrix. And then also you find various types of molecules that help cells kind of stick together, cell adhesion type molecules. And they kind of help hold everything in place inside of the matrix. You've got a matrix of this ground, ground substance and protein fibers. And then you've got, of course, the cells that make up the tissue around it. All right, um, then uh, here we have talking about tissues. We need to talk about how the cells in the tissues are connected. And so I've got three vocabulary words for you. Um, desmosomes, tight junctions, and gap junctions. And I've got a figure or diagram to kind of show and illustrate these. But these are all connections that allow cells to kind of come together. Um, and uh, desmosomes, they help to physically bind the cells together. So if you have two cells side by side, you may have a desmosome in between those cells and that kind of helps to hold the cells together. A tight junction, forms what's called a permeability layer. And I'll show you a picture of this or a, an example of this. It's like a gasket or a seal that goes around a cell. And then you have a gap junction and this allows for cells to actually have a way of communication, sending signals between two different cells. So let's kind of look at these individually again. Desmosomes, again, they're there to kind of attach cells together. In the picture you see two cells these look like maybe some uh, epithelial cells kind of stacked side by side. And you see a desmosome there kind of, this is like a, a protein type molecule in the, the cell membrane here. And it's kind of binding two cells together. Uh, sometimes you see these at the bottom of a cell. And at the bottom here, you have something called a basement membrane that these cells happen to be sitting on. And so you kind of have a half of a desmosome. And so that's called a hemidesmosome. And that's kind of a half 
portion of the desmosome that's kind of anchoring or attaching this cell to the basement membrane at the bottom. Notice also, and we'll talk about this a little later, also this particular epithelial cell has what's called a free surface up at the top where it doesn't have any type of connections. Another type of cell connection is a tight junction. Again, this kind of helps holds the cell together, but it does make a permeability barrier. In other words, it's like it's almost like having a, a rubber gasket or a seal wrapped around the cell, and that kind of helps um, uh, the cell select what types of molecules will be able to pass through or into the cell. So that prevents some molecules from kind of seeping down through these little spaces or cracks. It's going to get stuck there at that tight junction. And uh, that kind of forces molecules to have to pass through the actual cell membrane to diffuse into the cell. The last type of cell connection is what's called a gap junction. Um, and this is a protein channel that really allows ions to pass through. So here you have two cells close together. You've got these little pores or channels here that are made out of proteins. And so you could have some ions from one cell to pass through to the other cell. We'll talk about this a little later on um, when we talk about cardiac muscle cells, because this is a big way that your heart muscle cells can uh, send signals, communication signals very, very quickly to help keep your heart beating in rhythm and on time. So now that you had a little brief introduction to histology and the different types of tissues, let's focus in on um, the first main type and we'll get some, some very detailed information here for epithelial tissue. And then a little later, we'll talk about the connective tissue, uh, muscle and nerve tissue a little later. So epithelial tissue, I've got five main functions that your book kind of talks about and some examples for you. Um, these are five functions for this type of tissue. Number one is protection. Um, for example, your skin is made out of epithelial tissue, your epidermis, we'll see that in another chapter, but your skin is epithelial tissue and that provides your body with a layer of protection. Um, you also have some immunity because of your skin, um, so really it's helping with your immune, uh, your immune system. It's called a natural uh, type of immunity or an innate type of immunity that you have. Um, because you're born with your skin and you have that to protect your body from outside invading um, microorganisms. Some epithelial tissue helps to secrete things, substances, number three, or chemicals. Uh, for example, you have glands, and we'll talk a little bit about glands a little bit later on, that help. They're basically um, uh, epithelial cells kind of working together, and they produce uh, different types of chemicals, and they secrete those. Um, and then uh, even some organs work um, as glands, such as your pancreas, because it produces some um, uh, enzymes and hormones uh, as a gland. Number four, uh, epithelial tissues helps to transport um, substances into other tissues. And the example here is your small intestines. Is, uh, they're lined with epithelial cells on the inside, and that helps to absorb uh, the nutrients that you've just digested that helps to absorb the nutrients into the intestines, and then that gets transferred to the bloodstream. And then uh, a type of uh, sensation is felt uh, because um, usually you have some type of nerve endings associated with uh, or very close to epithelial tissue, and that helps to detect various types of stimuli. Now that you know a little bit about the functions for epithelial tissue, let's look at some specific characteristics, and I have several of these for you. We've already talked about a few of these, but number one, epithelial tissue is basically almost entirely um, formed by cells. In other words, there's very little extracellular matrix associated with epithelial tissue. Number two, you find it around the body surfaces and the glands. Uh, you find it on the outside of the body, the skin. Uh, you find it inside the body especially lining places like your digestive tract and your respiratory tract. Your heart has membrane around it that's made out of epithelial tissue. Uh, your blood vessels are made out of the actual uh, blood vessel cells are made from epithelial cells. And your body cavities have linings um, that protect the body cavities. That's epithelial tissue. Number three, they have a free surface. That's the outermost surface that I showed you earlier. A basal surface that's at the bottom and they have sides, lateral surfaces. 
And remember that basal surface is what connects to that basement membrane, um, which is part of your extracellular matrix. Number four, we've already talked about as well, cell and matrix connections. That includes your desmosomes, your tight junctions, and your gap junctions. Number five is that usually epithelial cells or tissue um, is avascular. So you usually don't find um, blood vessels running into the epithelial area. And so, uh, for example, here I've got a little um, uh, picture of epithelial uh, cells as it would be in the skin. And so the top portion here would be epithelial tissue. You can see the desmosomes, the tight junctions. You can see the free surface at the top, the lateral surfaces on the side, the basal surface at the bottom is connected to the basement membrane. And notice that there's no um, uh, vessels or vascular, uh, um, vascular cells or, or, or mat um, vessels here associated with the epithelial cells, but you do see these underneath. And so to come to allow for a gas exchange and allow for these cells to get nutrients, it has to rely on diffusion, diffusion of gases and diffusion of nutrients across this, um, this uh, collagen layer. And then usually you find that epithelial cells divide relatively quickly. So they have rapid mitosis and that uh, allows these cells to regenerate uh, very, very quickly. Mentioned the free surfaces um, that you find at the um, one side of the, or the top of the epithelial tissue or cells. And so each, um, you usually find four types of free surfaces. Either number one, they're smooth. There's no ridges or, or anything. They're just smooth. And that, that's important because that allows for uh, different substances to pass across without much friction. Sometimes you see the free surface is not smooth, but instead it has something called microvilli, which we talked about briefly in chapter three, that helps to increase the surface area. So for example, in the intestines, you would find the free surface to have many microvilli to help to absorb a lot of the nutrients. And in um, other cells, you find cilia. We talked about that also in chapter, uh, in chapter three. And so that is found in um, certain cells, especially like in the respiratory tract and the cilia help to move things across the surface, but those would be located on the free surface as well. And sometimes, sometimes you see the, uh, the free surface kind of folded. Um, it's not really um, like a microvilli, but it has larger folds. It's not smooth, it's kind of folded, and that allows that surface to kind of change shape a little bit. And you find that in the urinary system and the urinary bladder. Now the next little section, uh, briefly, we'll talk about glands because glands are technically epithelial or made out of epithelial tissue. And so here we see that there's a distinction between two different types of glands, extracrine glands and endocrine glands. And so make sure you make a note of what the uh, main distinctions are between these two and maybe an example. Um, an extracrine gland, by definition, is a gland that has a duct, it has a passageway that connects that gland with some other uh, structure. A good example of a sweat gland, a good example of an exocrine gland is a sweat gland. It produces a substance and it goes through a duct. In this case, it goes to the outside of the body. But one thing that students sometimes forget about is that exocrine glands don't always have to exit the body. Um, it just means that they have to have a duct uh, passageway. So for example, your pancreas functions as an exocrine gland because it produces enzymes that go out of the pancreas through a duct, but it goes into the intestines. Most of your exocrine glands are multicellular, but one exception is what's called a goblet cell. That's an exocrine gland that produces mucus, but it's a unicellular, a single cell type gland. Then uh, in contrast to exocrine glands, you have endocrine glands. Endocrine glands are distinguished here because they don't have a duct or passageway uh, to send the substances. Instead, they diffuse the uh, secretions directly into the bloodstream. And so examples of endocrine glands would include like your thyroid gland or your thymus gland, pituitary glands, your adrenal glands, and your pancreas is an endocrine gland as well. So it has exocrine and endocrine functions. So when you get to 169, one of the first chapters you will look at um, is the endocrine system. And so that will go through each of those types of endocrine type glands and organs.
Uh, figure 4.10 gives you some examples of epithelial glands or, or glands that are um, you know, made out of the epithelial tissue. And you can kind of see some different uh, structures here. Sometimes you see uh, a very simple looking gland. This is a multicellular gland. And so you'd have cells here that produce the substance and that would be secreted into a duct. And sometimes they're kind of tube shaped. Sometimes they are kind of shaped like a little um, pocket or a, um, a grape type oval shape and that's called asinar. And sometimes, sometimes they're show, shaped kind of a combination between the two. They're kind of tube shaped and asinar. So they just combine those two words to call that a tubulo asinar um, gland cell. Sometimes they are simple and sometimes the actual end of the gland is actually branched off. And so you really have many different combinations because then you can kind of put the shapes and the, the branched or non-branched into, um, uh, into a mixture here. So you can have a simple tube shaped or you can have a simple asinar or you can have compound asinar. We have multiple sections like this kind of branched out or you can have a compound tubular asinar type of a gland. Now for the epithelial glands, um, there's two main types of secretion that you'll find. And um, the first type here is what's called merocrine secretion. Most of your exocrine glands that you normally think about are gonna have this type of excretion, including things like your sweat glands um, and uh, your salivary glands. They're gonna have this type of secretion where you would have, like in the picture here, you've got all of your gland cells here. These are epithelial cells. Uh, they're producing some kind of chemical, and what they do is they package that chemical into a little vesicle, like a secretory vesicle, kind of like we talked about in chapter three, some type of little vesicle that gets secreted into the uh, opening here, the space inside of this gland, and then all of that gets secreted out. So the secretory cells package the products, they package the substance, whether it's the saliva for salivary glands or the sweat for sweat glands, they package it up into the vesicles, and that releases that substance by the process of exocytosis directly into the duct work. That's called merocrine secretion. The other type of secretion is called holocrine secretion. And the common example here is your, um, your oil glands or sebaceous glands. And you find these in the skin and they secrete, secrete the oily mixture called sebum. And this is a little different because now, instead of just exocytosing, you know, secreting out the individual uh, substance, it actually uh, sheds off a portion of that secretory cell. The whole cell comes out into the duct. And so it gets, uh, it gets secreted and that cell will rupture and some of the, the little individual particles come out as well. So that's called holocrine secretion. In the second lecture, second part, we will begin with uh, the second type of tissue, which is called connective tissue.